It seems like nobody wants to talk about Kyrie Irving anymore. A guy who was polarizing as can be in the last few years, whether it had to do with political stances, medical stances, and just being a player that after his stint with the Cavaliers and winning a championship with LeBron James, the breakup between Cleveland, the breakup between Boston, the breakup between Brooklyn, all became something that was just a negative sign on Kyrie Irving's name. And it was the same thing when he had to break up with Nike, whether it was political, whether it was different point of views, whether it was the way Kyrie acts, people just kept separating from Kyrie Irving. And I find it very interesting that Mark Cuban said one very important piece of information before he signed Kyrie Irving. And he said this internally, but he's spoken about it externally now, which is after hearing about all these things, right? Oh, Kyrie Irving didn't work in Cleveland, didn't work in Boston. It didn't work in Brooklyn with Nike, with the governor, with this, with that, with these players. He said every time he went and spoke to somebody, they talked about how much they loved Kyrie Irving. So he would also look after games. What would people do? A lot of people do jersey swaps. Some people walk away. Some people do this. All these players came and hugged Kyrie Irving after games. And he was noticing that despite what we see in the media with Kyrie Irving and the hate that he gets and the disputes that he goes through, it seems like everybody that's worked with him for the most part and a lot of people that know him love Kyrie Irving. The Mavericks needed a second guy. And Kyrie Irving is not 18-year-old Kyrie Irving. He's not 22-year-old Kyrie Irving. He's not the 25-year-old Kyrie Irving that had a you know, break up with LeBron. He's 31 years old. He's mature enough to know this is Luka Doncic's team. And he needs to be the number two. And he's willing to be the number two. And if you have Kyrie Irving playing the way he's playing as the number two in Dallas then you're in a good scenario. And I think we are very underestimating of what he's able to accomplish if he stays healthy going into the playoffs with Luka. And I think we haven't given him enough respect this year for what he's done. It's really weird because Kyrie was one of those guys, like a John Morant, that no matter what, everyone's always you know talking about him on Twitter. He did this, he did that. Maybe it's not as flashy this time around, but he's playing really good basketball in Dallas. Now, he's played 33 games this year, which is obviously not every single game, but he might be on track. He played 54 games in 2020. He might be on track to have his most games played since Boston in the 2018-2019 season. Since that 2018-19 season, he's played 20 games, 54, 29, 40, uh, 40 and 20 last year, so 60 and this year 33 so far so he might get very close to being around 60 games again this year uh, with dallas and he's playing very good basketball he really is he's you know playing 33 minutes a game which is a lot less than he did the last two three seasons but he's being really efficient he's shooting 49.1 percent from field goal range which is Outside of shooting 51% and 49% one year, this would be pretty much his third best shooting percentage of his career on top of still being at an 87% free throw percentage and being at 41.4 from three. 41.4. He's had one season where he finished higher than 41.5%, which was he had 418 in Brooklyn two years ago in 29 games in 2021-2022 season. It was 29 games and he shot 41.8. And he shot 41.5 with Cleveland in 2014. He's at 41.4. This would probably be tied or a second best three-point percentage in a season, in a full season. Since being in Cleveland, this was 10 years ago almost. On top of that, rebounds, 5.2 rebounds. If he finished off with 5.2 rebounds it would be tied for the most ever in his career, which was the 20 games in Brooklyn again. So if you wipe away a 20-game season, this would be the most rebounds he's averaged in the season. And he's at 5.5 assists, which is around his normal range, his career average of 5.7. Um, and his career average of 2.5 turnovers is 
very down. He's actually at 1.6, which would also by far not even close. He's never he's only had one season below nine or below uh, two turnovers. That's 1.9 last year of Dallas, and he's at 1.6 now. Obviously, he has the ball in his hands a lot less because of Luca. Um, Luca gets the ball a lot more, but we're still talking about 5.2 assists to only one and a half turnovers while shooting 41% from three, while shooting uh, 49, pretty much 50% from field goal range in general. 25.5 points per game as your number two. That's pretty hard to beat. He has scored more than 25 points per game three times in his career, pretty much. Uh, the year Kevin Durant wasn't playing in Brooklyn and the 20 games in Brooklyn where he was uh, played 20 games. He's pretty much been at 27 for the last two years and he had a 25 point season in, in Cleveland in 2016 and now he's at 25. I know the NBA scoring a lot more classic stuff. I get it. But my goodness, we're talking about one of his best seasons shooting percentage wise, a turnover to assist ratio, points per game staying healthy he might play more games than he has in a while and on top of that all while doing this as a number two the dallas mavericks have won six games in a row with him on the court and through those six games before the all-star break they beat philly at philly they beat brooklyn at brooklyn they beat the knicks in new york they beat okc they beat washington they beat san antonio Kyrie was averaging 36.7 minutes per game, which is up from his season average. 26.7 points, which is up from his season average. He was also at 6.3 assists and 5.7 rebounds. So 26, 6, and 5, all up from his season average with 36 minutes while the Dallas Mavericks are on a six-game winning streak. So with him playing, remember, he, he was out from the 22nd of January until uh, the 5th of February. So he missed a few games there. But they're on a six-game winning streak. And he's shooting 57%. He's shooting 43% from three. 26 points. 26.7. 6.3 assists. 5.7 rebounds. And they've won six in a row. And now they're back towards one game away from New Orleans for the sixth seed and one game behind Phoenix for the fifth seed. And they're only four games behind Denver, only five games behind the Clippers for the three seed and the four seeds. They're playing great basketball. And I just think it's been very underestimated how good they've been playing recently and how good Kyrie Irving actually has been. Because he has been so polarizing, people just haven't really talked to him and haven't liked to talk about him. But he's been great. The Mavericks have been good. And it looks like they really did make the right choice, bringing Kyrie as the number two. I'm not saying they're going to win it all. I'm not saying they're the best possible team out there right now. But Kyrie Irving, definitely a little underrated after being maybe overrated for a few seasons. I really appreciate the play he's had on the court and helping the Mavericks win. He's been a great number two out of the media. No big quotes this year. It's kind of exactly what they would want from Kyrie Irving, and they're getting that.